I'm Dr. Kobe Taylor. I'm a pharmacist and I am the CEO and owner of Awoke Wellness and Fusion Pharmacy. And I am really excited to talk to you today about nutritional support to live beyond ADD and ADHD and kind of look at uh, individual nutrients and kind of how they affect our system and how they play with um, our emotions and some of our neurotransmitters. Um, so I do talk to a lot of people and I do find that a lot of people have complaints. Um, they have a lot of different symptoms and they kind of present in different ways and not everybody is the same. And we do see that in ADD ADHD that there are several different types of ADD ADHD. Um, but whether it's lack of drive, lack of focus, or you're forgetful or restlessness, or you have a hard time doing tasks, um, sometimes expression of emotions, um, there's a lack of a lack of detail. Um, I it really is uh, kind of unique, and people will present kind of differently. Um, I just want to touch real quickly on medications. Uh, there are a lot of different medications that are used to treat ADD, ADHD, um, and sometimes we're supporting both the serotonin and the dopamine system, and a little bit of norepinephrine. Um, each each medication kind of has a different side effect profile and maybe a little bit different on how it's working with these different neurotransmitters. Not all medications are the same. Um, they obviously come with side effects. Some of the side effects are because people are nutrient deficient, in my opinion. So a lot of these medications actually can even cause nutrient deficiencies um, as part of their side effect profile. And um, genetically, we metabolize these all different. And I always tell people, you know, I'm a pharmacist, but I, I really do look at nutrition as kind of an important to be there in order for these medications to work the best they can. So if an individual is not making serotonin, it's difficult for a serotonin reuptake inhibitor to actually work if there isn't any serotonin present because the person's not making that. So it's important that we kind of look at the big picture and kind of look at all these different things. And a lot of times these medicines um, do. They can cause weight gain, and sometimes sleeplessness, they can impair appetite, increase blood pressure, and so really looking at what is the medication doing, what's missing in my body, and then customizing making a plan that's going to work best so that you can get to be well. I get lots of questions, um, and they're different questions from different people, but you know, is it, can supplementation really help with the symptoms of ADHD? Absolutely. Are there ways to treat different ways to treat ADD, ADHD? Absolutely. Lots of different ways, uh, both with nutrition and medication. Um, and some of our other presenters in the summit have talked about those things. Are there ways to improve different medications taken? Uh, yeah, some of these supplements do actually improve medications or help us use a lower dose so that we have less side effects. Uh, people get really frustrated and they say, I've tried everything and nothing's working. And if I can get one message across in this um, summit today is that there are 100% there are solutions to help you be well and help you uh, maximize your body and do um, and feel better and minimize the symptoms of ADD, ADHD. Uh, why do people have uh, AD, ADD, ADHD and why is there more than like 20 years ago? And I think a lot of that goes with uh, nutrition. It's also we are using a lot more of these neurotransmitters with kind of our activities of daily lives and things that we're involved in with screens and just our social media and some of those things do release neurotransmitters which creates more of a demand on our systems. So specifically we're looking at we know that patients who are have ADD, ADHD that 95% of them are deficient in dopamine, 50% are deficient in serotonin and we look at these individual neurotransmitters and we say well what do they do for us? Like, why, why do we need them? Uh, dopamine is a kind of a spark of the life. It helps with motivation and drive. It helps with energy, focus, attention. Um, it is our reward center. And so it's very vital for us to have that and feel a part of a uh, community and help us to function in society. Serotonin is a happy hormone and it helps us with mood, positive feelings, well-being. It's very calming, helps eliminate anxiety, helps with energy, helps us sleep. Um, and actually helps with digestion, our ability to feel full and our, how satisfied we are. Um, it also helps with um, not having constipation as well as other symptoms. So uh, serotonin is made in the brain. 95% of its mechanism or action is actually on receptors in the digestive tract. Um, so we do see different pain points. So 
when, you know, whether it's, you know, I, I have no energy, I can't, I can't focus, I'm not functioning at work or school, I've got all this anxiety, and anytime we have anxiety, it's our way, it's our body's way of saying, puts us into fight or flight, and it puts you into fight or flight to keep you safe, actually, it's a safety mechanism. Um, anxiety is telling me that you're missing something, you're missing a nutrient, you're missing one of these neurotransmitters, you don't, there's some reason why you don't have that, and whether or not, um, and we also too will crave things. So when we have anxiety, we say, oh, I've got to have some of these things. And some of us will go toward um, caffeine and some people will go with chocolate and some people might use other substances to try to feel better um, and try to get more of that neurotransmitter. Um, medications or um, things that cause a release of a neurotransmitter can then be addictive. So it can cause you to crave those things Body makes a connection and says oh hey when i eat that or i take that i do get i feel better and it can even be ice cream or different certain carbs or uh, soda pop those do release neurotransmitters and we go back to those and that is kind of how our body is looking at those things and when we're in anxiety or in fight or flight we don't think uh, as rationally and so we make decisions more emotionally and that's where uh, you eat a whole box of donuts and then you feel better in 20 minutes and think why did I eat all those donuts um, and then I'm never doing that again and then three or four hours when that wears off you go back and you're thinking about the same exact thing and repeating that behavior um, some people will have like apathetic depression so they just don't have any emotion and they really don't feel or have a lack of concern for others and um, just don't feel well overall so some of the causes of dopamine deficiency are, um, like I said, it could be genetic. So you have different genetics and there's uh, some different types of ADD, ADHD. Uh, depression can lead to ADD, ADHD, schizophrenia can as well. Uh, type 2 diabetes has got some medication that can lead to ADD, ADHD with some of its dysregulation of insulin and kind of the effect on hormones and kind of that um, process. Parkinson's is a disease state that actually you've lost brain function and you actually have less uh, dopamine producing cells. Um, and then we're exposed to games. So video gaming and social media, we're eating a lot more processed foods and sugars and all of that has an effect on our ability to make dopamine. Uh, we do see sometimes that nutrients are missing that we can't make dopamine. Um, so if you're missing some of those things, you can see um, deficiencies from that as well. This shows you the conversion of proteins to dopamine and kind of walks you through the process. So we eat meat, um, our stomach acid has to break that down. If somebody's not making enough stomach acid, then they have a hard time getting the amino acids out of the protein they need. Um, and you need other vitamins and nutrients, cofactors, minerals, to convert from your protein or amino acid, L-thalonine, tyrosine, all the way to dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. On the, Far side, you can see kind of a list of all the nutrients that you have to have in order for this process to occur. So if somebody is deficient in iron, uh, they could uh, struggle making their dopamine. And when you figure that out and start putting some of that in, either eating it in diet or supplementing, you can see a shift, a huge shift in how the person feels and kind of their system is supported and they can get to their um, feeling better faster. Uh, this slide shows you the conversion of proteins to serotonin, uh, very similar to the last slide, but you can see that tryptophan is the essential amino acid that's needed in order for you to convert to uh, serotonin and then on to melatonin. And again, some of the cofactors are a little different, but all of those are needed in order for us to convert, break down protein, get the amino acid out we need, and then convert to the end product. Serotonin is converted to melatonin, which helps regulate sleep, and so somebody who's not making serotonin likely is not making melatonin either. So we know that a deficiency in serotonin can lead to decreased dopamine levels, and so the two kind of go hand in hand. It helps with um, transportation of these amino acids across the brain, um, and if serotonin levels are low, uh, people will struggle to allow tyrosine to cross. Um, which is the amino acid needed to help build these systems. So, um, if you, and some people will respond. So some people will do better when we're treating serotonin. Some people will do better when we're treating dopamine, supporting those systems, and some, it actually works both. And oftentimes I do find that supporting both is the most effective um, treatment.
Um, omega-3 fatty acids is, is well studied. There's actually quite a bit of research on this that's actually showing that it does improve mood. Um, it improves uh, hyperactivity, attention, impulsivity, um, anxiety. Uh, it helps with inflammation. So it decreases inflammation across the board, helps us make our own cannabinoids. And that process uh, is used, and there's lots of research in using omega-3s with all kinds of diseases, arthritis, and um, pretty much any disease out there is seen some improvement um, from omega-3s because of its effect on inflammation. Uh, people should get, uh, younger kids should get, I look at like about a thousand milligrams of EPA and DHA when you add those together. Um, and then adults are between two and 3,000. Uh, a lot of the gummies don't have enough. They're really low amounts of omegas, and so they're really not enough to have an effect. Uh, you can get them from algae, but you have to take quite a lot of that as well. And you sometimes can find some, we have a flavored liquid, we have a lemon one that's actually really quite good, um, and well tolerated and palatable, so. Phosphatidylcholine or phosphatidylserine is a fatty acid. It is works really great in combination with omega three. It helps build the brain, so it's it's just one of those building blocks and does help with memory and helps prepare um, and has been shown to improve hyperactivity, attention, and impulsivity in some patients with ADD. Um, zinc is another. Uh, nutrient that's got a lot of research behind it. It does help with impulsivity and hyperactivity as well. Um, it can be used, actually, it's been shown in studies to lower your overall need for um, medications. So if you can decrease your medications by 40%, then that's significant, because then you have less side effects. So you're um, having more of an effect with less, less needed. Um, it's pretty easy to do a blood test, so you can just do a blood test. It's found in seafood, red meat, dairy, beans, nuts, and whole grains, um, and is considered very safe. Um, vitamin D, uh, quite, quite a few studies showing that there's improvement in ADHD, um, and a lot of people have low, low vitamin D when they um, have a lab, pretty easy to do the test. There was a study that showed that mothers that have low vitamin D are more likely to have children with ADHD. Uh, it does help with the conversion of tryptophan to serotonin, so supporting that system, um, which is why we see improvements in mood. It also helps with inflammation. Um, it helps the body's ability to get magnesium from outside the cell, inside the cell. Uh, we make vitamin D when we are in the sun, so we, about 15 minutes of sun a day does help with that, and um, sunscreens do impair the ability, body's ability to actually convert or make vitamin D. And some kids are, and even adults, are inside a lot. And so if you're not seeing the sun, then you probably should consider uh, supplementing. And at the very least, you should have it tested. Iron. Iron is a huge player. It does help in both the serotonin system and the dopamine system. Uh, so somebody who is deficient in iron might not be making either one of those neurotransmitters or struggling to make that. Um, it is also can be ran. You can run a lab uh, blood test to see kind of where it is. Um, it does help with behavior, focus, and drive. Uh, it is constipating. So pretty much any type of iron supplement, no matter what, is somewhat constipating and nauseating. So that's kind of the limiting factor to those. Uh, chelated iron products help minimize that or are better tolerated. Um, I do have people sometimes take orange juice with it. Um, it's absorbed in an acidic environment. All your minerals are. So when you take uh, an acidic juice, it increases the absorption. Apple cider vinegar can do that as well, um, but you'll see an increase in those mineral absorptions. Um, it's, a, it's found in beans, cashews, leafy vegetables, whole grains, red meat, and pumpkin seeds. Uh, magnesium, this is, is very effective at helping with sleep and relaxation, um, It actually for a lot of people will help with constipation. Um, it doesn't improve attention directly, but it's more supportive of the systems and is needed to kind of um, convert. Um, it, it does also seem to have an effect on the medication rebound. So when the stimulant wears off, uh, people seem to respond better um, if they've got their magnesium levels where they need to be and they don't seem to have that effect where it drops off as fast. Magnesium glycinate um, is better tolerated for a lot of people and seems to have good absorption and is less likely to cause loose stools if that's a problem. And often that's the limiting factor. We sometimes will do magnesium topically. So you can do foot soaks or you can put it on and it will penetrate and go into the skin, which will also help minimize some of those GI 
one of the symptoms that we are sensitive to those. Vitamin C, we've talked about it a little bit. It's changing the absorption, so it helps with absorption of minerals, but it does impair absorption of your ADHD drugs, so you want to take those at different times. It's an antioxidant. It helps clear toxins. It helps boost the immune system, um, and it's supportive of both dopamine and serotonin. It's found in broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, citrus fruit, uh, red and green peppers, and tomatoes. Um, inositol, very calming. So overall, it's supporting uh, several neurotransmitters. So it's, it's supporting serotonin, GABA, glutamine, and dopamine. This helps um, transport some of the amino acids across into the blood brain barrier or into brain cells, where it can then be converted into neurotransmitters. And so it does help with uh, focus and motivation and memory. Um, it's found in fruits, specifically coconut, beans, grains, and nuts. Um, it is destroyed, however, when you freeze or cook these, so it minimizes or limits how much you get out of those foods when we do that, when we modify. Uh, L-tryptophan, so I want to talk specifically about some of these amino acids. So sometimes people are low in these amino acids because they're, they don't have their stomach acids, so they're not breaking down their proteins appropriately, their digestive tract's not working correctly. Uh, they either don't have enough acid or they don't have the enzymes needed to break them down. Uh, sometimes people just aren't eating them. Um, so in, since tryptophan and uh, L-phenylalanine are both essential amino acids, if you're not eating it, you're then that makes it more difficult for your body to actually make neurotransmitters when it's missing that part. Uh, so specifically, tryptophan's got some support. Uh, it's usually taken at bed. Uh, it does seem to help some cause drowsiness for some people. It works better in combination products where you're supporting other supplements like B6 and niacin to kind of help um, those systems and make sure that it's being converted. It does support production of serotonin, obviously, and you do see improvements in pain, sleep, mood, constipation, paranoias, OCDs, um, depression, and then it does um, help the uh, dopamine system work as well. 5-HTP is 5-hydroxytryptophan, so it's been converted one step down that way. So some people uh, do really well on the supplementation. It also has an antidepressant effect and decreases anxiety and obsessive compulsive. Um, it crosses the blood barrier, barrier really easy. Um, and then taking it actually with vitamin C or having vitamin C on hand uh, helps minimize conversion of it to serotonin in the digestive tract allows more of it to circulate and end up going across to the brain. So catecholamine precursors are both, um, so this is supporting the dopamine system. Uh, L-phenylalanine is the essential amino acid. Tyrosine is a conditionally essential amino acid. You can find um, beef, chicken, fish, pork, eggs, uh, nuts, seeds, milk, pasta, whole grains, sweet potatoes are all sources of L-phenylalanine. Um, it seems to be, it's tolerated. It seems to have like a more mild effect when taken. I use it a lot in children. Tyrosine um, is found in a lot of those things, but it's actually found in fermented foods as well. So sauerkraut and kimchi, um, kind of aged cheeses, those types of things. Um, specifically, they both help with energy and mood. Um, and you can buy um, L-phenylalanine, but also as D-L-phenylalanine. So kind of in a combination product. Probably the one thing to be of note is most people will take them earlier in the day because it sometimes keeps people awake or reactivating. Um, so they'll take these first thing and then they might take their serotonin based products either at noon or at night to kind of help calm down and kind of help offset some of the effects of this. You do have to be careful with people who have high blood pressure because if you have a hard time making dopamine and it pushes it to epinephrine or norepinephrine, then you've got um, more likelihood of increasing blood pressure. If your thyroid's not uh, balanced, you need to use caution, and then those people who have bipolar um, often um, already have a dysfunctional dopamine system, and it's been shown to sometimes increase how long somebody stays in the manic phase or push them in the manic phase. So you, those all need to be, you have to work with a provider and use caution when using um, L-phenylalanine or tyrosine. GABA is an amino acid that is quite remarkable. It works very good on situational anxiety. Uh, GABA is a system that um, helps balance out the glutamate, uh, kind of the excitatory side of things. Some people just have too much glutamate. And in fact, some genetic conditions with glutamate, people just don't uh, break down uh, glutamate as well. 
Um, and so that's why they are stressed and excited and have all of this hyperactivity. And so you do see uh, limiting diets or trying to limit some glutamate. Um, it's a lot very common in processed foods, MSG or monosodium glutamate. Um, and so some people are really sensitive to that um, genetically. And so uh, minimizing intake of that can help. Uh, GABA specifically uh, works really fast. So you, within 15, 20 minutes, you can take somebody from a panic attack down to a normal state. Um, it kind of sells itself. We sell quite a bit of it. Um, it helps slow the mind. It can be used at night to sleep. Um, has very good effects um, help balancing and support low serotonin and dopamine. We often use GABA in combination with L-theanine, which is the next one I want to talk about. Um, so we have a product called GABACOM that uses them both together. Theanine is very calming. Um, it helps, again, balance excitatory systems. It's neuroprotective. It's found in green tea and some mushrooms. Um, and it enhances levels of serotonin and then it also helps enhance the release of dopamine. So it's supporting both systems, helping with ADD, ADHD, and kind of helping people feel more calm and kind of a state of um, well-being. I want to dive into some case studies and kind of go into specifically some things that we've done. Um, again, you can meet with me and get a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you can go to our website, Fusion Specialty Pharmacy, and book a consult. Uh, this particular um, individual is 12 years old, had ADD, so he didn't have hyperactivity. I've uh, been in the principal's office quite a bit for uh, behavior issues, um, had trouble sleeping, and was really struggling in school. We put him on a low-dose uh, L-tryptophan, we put him on a little bit of L-phenylalanine and a GABACOM to help with anxiety and sleep. Uh, we also did a multivitamin, just kind of multivitamin minerals, kind of hit a lot of those things. And we did fish oil, and inositol worked really well for him, and we did a lot of work on diet, trying to eliminate processed foods and some dyes and um, some glutamate things. Uh, we also um, got him eating more fruits and vegetables. Overall, it did really well. Uh, we saw significant improvements in 30 days, and in 90 days, he was starting to pull off some of his meds and was sleeping better and feeling a lot better and was actually focusing his grades improved as well. Uh, uh, this, this gentleman was 20 years old. Uh, he liked to chew, so he's got nicotine. We sometimes will see nicotine causes releases of dopamine, and so a lot of times people will gravitate toward uh, something that helps. Uh, caffeine does that as well. So somebody might use that because they feel better and they're able to focus and function throughout their day. And so um, he's currently using that. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of focus and drive and has some depression as well. So we put him on tryptophan, we did tyrosine and gabacom. We did again a multivitamin mineral, vitamin C, fish oil, and vitamin D. Uh, this combination worked really well for him um, and helped him get uh, moving that direction. Um, we're still in talks about someday trying to get off the tobacco. Um, and I think when he's ready, there's really good studies of using higher doses of tryptophan for 30 days to help somebody pull off and not have the withdrawal and some of those things with tobacco success. And it was 86% success rate in, in the study that that was done. Um, and so they can be used. So amino acids can absolutely be used to help people who are addicted to things or help pulling off of addictive substances. Um, our body makes connections with those. And so when we crave things or we're looking for things, it means we're missing a neurotransmitter. And if you're balanced, then you don't crave um, and you don't have anxiety. And that's, that's the normal state. A lot of people go through life and don't even know what that really feels like. And it is really, there is a solution uh, to get to that. And people can do that both through nutrition, sometimes medication and other techniques that um, some of the providers that have uh, presented in the summit have talked about. So overall, just looking at big pictures, there are solutions. You can 100% get feeling better and get to where you want to be. Um, if you want to collaborate with experts and kind of come in and do a consult with me, you can go to fusionspeciallypharmacy.com and book a consult with me directly. Um, we can kind of customize a plan and kind of work through and figure out what's going to be best for you or your child. Um, again, we, we're really particular in the products that we carry. We, we like vetted products, so we want to make sure that what we have is really going to deliver what medication is needed or what supplements needed. Um, 
There's studies that show that 70% of the products on the market don't have what they say. So a lot of people will go and buy it, um, and they're buying a counterfeit or they're buying it from places, and it really is, the industry is not as regulated as I think people think. Um, and so there's a lot of miss, bad products and things on the market that really um, don't help people or aren't really doing what they think they should be doing. So people say, oh, it didn't work. Well, and I say, where did you buy it? And did you even get what you really thought you got? Um, we work with a lot of practitioners, so it's not just um, not just there, but we're, we work with people in the community and can kind of have lots of resources to help connect people and kind of get you to wellness. And we kind of like that integrative approach where we're working with people to come up with the best plan for you to get you to be well. Um, and we target specific neurotransmitters that are missing and kind of work through that process. And so. Um, I've really enjoyed speaking with you today. I hope that I've answered some of your questions and if you have more, please reach out. That's what we do. We love to talk to people um, and help people to become well. And with that, I say, be well.